first event. <laughs> Hello, <Hi>. everyone. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for joining our presentation today. Um, so me and Stefan would like to share some uh, new development on our uh, pursuit to inclusive design. And uh, on that specific topic, we are now uh, into libraries. So how does library support inclusion through efficient design and development life cycles? And um, before I start, I'd like to thank you, the Fundamental Conference Organization, for believing that our work does contribute to the agenda of this event as well. Um, so our agenda for today, it's going to cover accessibility, uh, a, an accessibility problem diagram for designers and how that contributes to the design blueprint that we'd like to, 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 to use as a reference for us to, to move forward to understand libraries. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about design annotation, how the checklist is help on the design annotation. We're going to see an overview of, of a designer persona and how this persona would uh, benefit from libraries. Uh, types of libraries that exist and the challenges that exist to work with libraries. Uh, we're going to see uh, how an annotated component looks like uh, and to, to understand how that fits to the library and uh, how that Allow, allows us to understand the lines that are necessary between library types. Then we come with like, a, what's the problem and what's the solution that we're proposing? And then we come to the takeaways. So I like to start with this one specific quote and uh, the WCAG 2.1 has this one uh, information about them supporting uh, by an extensive library of implementation techniques and educational material. So they do support that, but there is a strong focus on implementation and code. So design, designers are left to interpret the content in order to work with the recommendations during the design phase. So there is a lot of interpretations for designers to uh, understand what should be done uh, to build an experience and not to code, to build, to design. It. So as a shift left approach, we want to offer designers tools and processes to create inclusive experiences based on the WCG guidelines, which are the international guidelines most used to assess accessibility on products. So um, if you wonder where to start, so we propose this accessibility um, problem diagram. So we have presented in the past a series of assets to annotate design, which ensures the correct implementation of accessible experiences. The first starting point is self-education. We propose, uh, SAP proposes a series of videos to inform what are the topics to be uh, considered when designing uh, for accessibility. Then uh, the second step that we propose is that the designer comes with an understanding about what are the inventories that they have to work with. And by inventories, we talk about how many components we are dealing with, we are using to create uh, designs, how many floor plans we have, uh, to create new pages. And um, th these will be the basis and the structural elements to create more features and more screens and more pages moving forward. And that will bring consistency as well. So next designers annotates the page with the screens and features, reusing the floor plans, reusing the components. And that's when the importance of the library stands to exist. So the result and the benefits is that uh, this creates a blueprint of my product because I know exactly what are the elements that makes my pro pro products to exist. And uh, that is specify an efficient process across stakeholders, because here we are talking about designers, but this also benefits uh, QA, front-end developers, technical writers, product managers. And you can see here the two, the two libraries that are side by side. You see the left side of this diagram that belongs to what uh, we want to um, recommend designers to work with, and the right side, the left side, I meant, and the right side of this um, graphic, the green part of the graph, there is the part where development starts after the experience has been designed. And you see there are two libraries in here. There is one library, which is the design library, where components are located and floor plans for that matter, and the control library, which is used by development to code the proposed design. Those libraries is what we are bringing as a recommendation to be aligned. So user, uh, designers can use the design library and console the control library. So um, at its heart, accessibility is about people and not checklists. 
And although I agree with Liz Brown, and I heard that during an accessibility training I did with her, checklists are useful tools to manage and track annotations for accessibility. At the same time, designers want and need tools and processes to deliver accessible design that best face organizations. For instance, I have so many requirements to consider uh, from the WCAG guidelines that I need to have processes to understand the, the, the scope of uh, each one of those requirements to the tasks that I'm doing in the design phase. So the assets proposed uh, in the past by Mian Stefan to annotate design, they are useful tools to make this um, design correctly specified for correct implementation of accessibility. So they are useful for this reason. So, so the good thing about the checklist is that they guide the, the user through this process. They avoid gaps or missing annotations. So uh, that uh, helps designers to address the full scope of accessibility during the design phase and gives confidence to the de developers to develop um, that they are developing accessibility uh, as uh, recommended by designers. And as my colleague Stefan says, checklists bridges the gaps among people with different needs. So now let's unfold the life of a designer. This is Dave, and um, he'll say something like this. Design is my life, and I'm always learning new strategies to create vivid experiences. Accessibility has been recently incorporated into our work, and I have a lot to learn and produce. I'm looking for strategies to balance the current workload with the new demanding accessibility tasks. So if we dissect how accessibility can be incorporated in an organization and help Dave, we have to start listing responsibilities assigned to designers so we can create these inclusive experiences. Uh, then we have to identify activities that will fulfill these responsibilities and the tools that will support Dave to perform that. As you can see here, my second line talks and focus on design and fixes of tickets that came from customers or identified by, by QA people. And for that, it's important that the library promotes this um, quick way to resolve issues, quick way to create designs. So I'm, I'm confident that I'm using a library that comes with the behaves, the looks, and all the, the, the considerations for accessibility that I can be reusing all, across all my design work. So that's how uh, the component library would help with Dave during the design phase and doing uh, tickets that uh, should require some fixes as well. So what type of libraries we are talking about? So I, what I did here is a mapping of guidelines and specifications that we could consider libraries as well. And if you come from, from the, the beginning of this whole process, we started design guidelines. And those design guidelines at SAP, we have a, a design direction for theory. That is a documentation that lives on a web page, that lives on a web page, on a, a content management system. Now, in order for us to bring efficiency to work with libraries, we have to understand where this deficiency, how the efficient could be, could be achieved. And the efficiency, the efficiency is achieved by giving the right tools to the users and not only information. And the tools is that we use big ones to create designs. Designers need some, they have assets to, to annotate the, the design, but are they, they being uh, helped to create those designs easy and fast by reusing components from a certain library? Sometimes this is easy with uh, libraries that are very um, uh, clear and easy to find. Sometimes this is not so clear to find the components that you want to use on the, the UI. So this is where the design library comes to exist. So that design library is the tool that a designer uses to build designs, to build screens, to build pages and features. After that, it goes to implementation. And then we are talking about the, the, the libraries of the technical libraries, the libraries that contain controls in two different levels. It has a, general, on a level of styling and it has an, a, a higher level, which has a lot of behaviors and has a specific technology as, associated to that. So then we have 
here three different types of libraries. And depending on the product, I might have different technologies being used. So I have different libraries as well. And how all those libraries are being aligned. So this is what we're looking for. How do we align all these libraries so we have a good communication, um, uh, a common terminology used across them? But let's see a little bit more about that. So there are three challenges that I'd like to point to work with libraries that I, me and Stefan, we identified during this process. The first one is locating the library. And the locating the library means that we might have libraries that come directly from SAP uh, design, and the, the, we call them core components. And right now, we just had a presentation about uh, Pure Horizon, and that, that, that's what we use as a guidance for us to, to fulfill that direction, that design direction. However, the core components is not enough. We might have to create um, custom components. So where are those components um, uh, uh, located? So which library should I go to find those components? So at this point, we, we, we see that we do have two, at least two different libraries to, to consume. And then I have the control library. And how many control libraries might I have, depending on the number of um, uh, technologies that I have? So if my organization has a number of 10 designers or 50 designers, they might be working with different products using different technologies. And I have to ensure that all of them talk, talk the same language to find and use components that look alike and behave alike. So this is what we are um, going for uh, alignments of, among libraries. Now, uh, with the second challenge would be the consistent terminology. And uh, consistent terminology comes with similar elements being used by different libraries, but call it different things. So here we have a component that look alike, but they use different terminologies. And besides looking alike, there, there is also the behavior behind that. And if that behavior is not annotated, we wouldn't know how each component would behave unless we go through the technical library, if that's available, and I test that specific component. So having this core library helps designers to understand what's the basics of that behavior. So um, th the reason they are different, it's because there is a lack of coordination. And when I talk about lack of co coordination or vision, it's, it's not because we have to absolutely give them the same look, the same, uh, the same behavior. If they use different technologies, they have to look and behave differently. Okay. But how do we come to um, an agreement about what's the basic behavior that we want to achieve? And then move towards that one specific behavior. And that becomes our core library. Um, and the third challenge would be about the consistent look and behavior that I mentioned before. Uh, here you see um, many different types of cards from different libraries that look differently. And they, they are possibly variations of the same card. But how do I identify each one of them? How do I call each one of them? So where are the gaps regarding interactions? Is, uh, is, is it in the design specification or in the implementation? How many variations are there for the same control? So a component that contains variations should be easily identified, should be informed for designers and for developers. So, so we talk the same language. We call the element the same thing, especially if they differ in structure, interaction and navigation. Now, how to annotate a component? So this, this brings like some of the annotations that uh, Stefan and I created to, to, to be used by designers at SAP to annotate designs for the correct implementation of accessibility. What you see here is not a page, it's a control, it's a component. It, that this component is a card. You can see here like three specific groups of annotation. One that comes with the keyboard support, another one with screen reading, and another one with complementary annotation. Do we cover all uh, WCA requirements? No, no, but we cover what's important for this control. Then we see the name of the, the, the component on the design library, the name that would uh, refer to the control library. We see when it has been uh, updated and uh, who is the owner of this component. Now, this is all good, but what happens next that this component is annotated if, I, if this belongs to my component design library? 
So the next step is that I like this to be aligned with the control libraries as well, the development library. And at that point, I want uh, these to be aligned. So I, I have efficiency doing my uh, design work, not only for the designers to be efficient, but for developers to be efficient, to implement that without questions. They know that we are talking about that one specific component. So efficiency is the key word of this presentation to work with libraries. Now, how that would look like on a design that's delivered for the developers to work with. So he can trust that everything that he sees in front of him can be implemented without question. So I don't have to notate the component anymore for how it behaves, for how it looks. All I need to do is point to the, the, the component, what's the name of the component. So that leads directly to the, the, the component that lies on my library of components on the specification for this card. So on my page, all I have to do is create this one link that this component, it's called a card and a summary card. And if I need to know more information about that, I know where to go. It's my encyclopedia that contains all my components with instructions for correct implementation of accessibility. Now, what's the problem that we are bringing here today? We are bringing the problem that there is a lack of coordination and vision when working with libraries, because that prevents work efficiency and alignments, because that do not provide the right tools for stakeholders, mainly designers and developers to work, and, that, and because that ignores the importance of trusted libraries where components look alike and behave alike. The solution that we propose, it's acknowledging the landscape that we work with. Every product has a different landscape. Every product will have a different type of problem to, to solve. But the first step to do is how many libraries do I have? How do I bring alignment among all of these uh, libraries? And create a plan of action, make an inventory of commonly used assets and uh, use, that should be used to create experiences. Now, the takeaways of this presentation is that, yes, we know that there are challenges working with libraries, including locating the components, uh, finding the components with a clear terminology, and uh, maintaining consistent looping data across those components. We understand that, that inventories would help us to come with a more efficient way to find, locate the component, and um, understand that, that there is an alignment with the control we use it for implementation and that will support efficient workflows for all the stakeholders. A design library would contain reusable components annotated for accessibility, and the design and control libraries depend on a solid strategy plan and strong alignment. This is our short presentation. I would ask Stefan to say a few words uh, before we come to the Q&A. Thank you, Ella. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my few words will be limited to the fact that I found in my 10 years plus experience in this field between design and development, there is really a huge potential for confusion. Some of the aspects Ella has already um, told you about. But I personally think it is uh, really some kind of a management thing to have the backlog of the design and the development closely coupled in a way that they both can react and interact and iterate in time with each other. In a company where uh, you have a hierarchy that is meeting at the top, uh, at, at, at the board level, yeah, and you have a separate design department and a separate development department, this won't work because you will then always have a discrepancy here and that, that avoids for close iteration and, and quick turnaround here to get these things working. So what you need is a supervising uh, unit that is coordinating this uh, effort. Avoiding on the left hand that there are too many variants of design libraries, avoiding on the right hand there are too many variants of framework libraries, just to have a, a good balance between all that. Yeah? And a company who is not living that day by day is, in my personal opinion, not professionally 
can't exist in. Having said that, open the discussion for questions, please.